We'll get a good look to see. I think he's playing countertop. Countertops, I would think. I've never I seen the, the the Conflux deck play, so. Because the Conflux deck, like, Dream House costs five. And I have to assume that the Conflux deck also has the same counter magic. And so counterbalance itself isn't going to do anything. Although once Dreams Hall, Dream Hall hits the board, every counter spell in the in um, in David's hand is going to basically be a force of will. Well, um, every counter spell equals force of will and days. Because Dream Hall works for both players. Yep. But then again, Mike's going to be gaining quite a bit of uh, card advantage. Dream House doesn't cost three, it costs five, right? Yeah. I'm saying it costs three. It also can get hit by a uh, Force of Will. So, first turn. Sure. Uh, what is his opponent? Oh, his opponent's playing Merfolk? Yeah, Merfolk, it looks like. I think the matchup is still the same. I yeah. think maybe the Merfolk matchup is probably. Um, worse for the complex player because Merfolk can get an aggressive probably, start. Yeah, I think I think it's probably about the same. It's creatures, a clock, and counter spells. Yeah, both decks are the exact same thing. So it's the classic uh, aggro control versus uh, con versus combo. Historically, it's in favor of aggro control, but we shall see. First turn brainstorm from. From uh, Mike. I don't see a uh, see a couple brainstorms. A lotus petal and a dream halls in Mike's hand. Turn one Aether Vial from Dave. And Scalding Turn removes those Brainstorm cards that Mike didn't want. Hopefully give him more draws to a Conflux. So what exactly do you need with this deck to go off? I've never seen it. Well, apparently it's the, you're just trying to get Dream Halls, Dream, Dream Halls out as fast as possible. And from reading in the chat, it looks like uh, Show and Tell is the method to, um, to accelerate out your Dream Halls. So that costs three. So you get three mana, you get Dream Halls out. And then basically Dream Halls says that you can pitch any card to cast any card uh, for free. It goes to the graveyard, I believe. You discard a card to cast any card in your hand without paying its mana cost, as long as they share a color. So uh, you you uh, you pitch a card to go get Conflux, which is all the colors, and then you pitch any card. Well, you pitch a card to cast Conflux. Then you cast, you pitch, and when you cast Conflux, you, you'll get you basically you'll get five cards. You get another Conflux, three. You get three. Um, Cruel ultimatums, and like another conflicts probably. Well, you already you use one of the cruels as a blue card, so it needs to be a white and a red. I don't know if they're actually conflicts is white. Oh yeah, it is. So you get two conflicts, I guess, if you want. And then you pitch, you cast three cruels, and usually you can somehow get that fourth cruel and just do twenty of all cruel ultimatums. Well, sure. If you conflicts for two conflicts, three cruel ultimatums, cast two of the cruel ultimatums. Uh, cast another conflicts, get the last crawl tomato. So, I'm sure I butchered that, but we're gonna get to learn. We're gonna get to see this all together. This is gonna be my first time seeing this. Yeah, I haven't seen this deck before. It's pretty exciting. Although it looks like the Merfolk player is getting a advantage with a bunch of Merfolk and a Curse Catcher. That can counter. Does that count a non-creature or is it instant and sorcery? Instant or sorcery. Yep. 
What are they talking about? I'm just uh, attacking with a Chris Catcher Activate and Mutable. Go ahead. Draw does not produce really anything for Mike. But he does have a Dream Halls in hand, along with a Brainstorm. So I'm guessing there needs to be a lot of tutors to go get um, the Conflux, or do you just need to have both of these cards in your hand? It's got to be. I, I, I want to do a good deck five with this deck. I think we will. Win or lose, he's in. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot of damage coming out of the Merfolk deck. Got Michael down to five. So this is it. He's got to. He's got to do it now. And all sure. I see is um, a Dream Halls and a Show and Tell, and he packs it up. Ooh, Cruel Tomato on the top of his deck. Although that doesn't seem to be enough. Usually it's enough, but usually that it's enough in Standard. Yeah, exactly. But is it enough in Legacy? Who I knows? think he wanted to not show his opponent what he was playing. Well... Is it, well, I guess it went Island, 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 Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Brainstorm. Could be playing like the Ad Nauseam deck. With Islands? Plays one Island, I guess. I don't know. It could be that, you know, David just has no clue what's going on. It's possible. We could tell by the way he's side boys. Well, he brings in Spell Pierce. Pierce. He takes out Jitte, so I think he has some idea what's going on. I think he knows he's up against some sort of combo. Sure. Looks like Mike is boarding in Engineer Explosives and boarding out is that a Progenitus and a Pact of Negation. Pact of Negation is really good in this deck, it seems. Is, well, I mean, I guess it's as good as it is in any combo deck that wins in one turn. Exactly. Isn't there a Hive Mind deck also in Legacy? There's so many decks in this format. I don't know if there's a Hive Mind deck. I guess you could play Hive Mind, but I, th I think if you're playing a ritual based um, deck, you have to ask yourself why not just. Ad nauseum. Or either ad nauseum or Belcher or anything. Because the, the Hive Mind deck is probably not going to win turn one. We just saw the Belcher deck win turn one and turn two. Sure. I mean, it's possible that, you know, Hive Mind can get there. But, you know. You know. I see a lot of you knows. You know? I don't, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? I don't know. This is sick, you know? <laughs> you like that one? I didn't. So this is sick, you know? Don't get it. You laughed. Did I? Yeah. It was one of those polite laughs, like when uh, you go to the comedy club and the guy isn't funny, but everyone claps. It's like, you're not funny, but we're, you, tell, you tell a joke and I'll clap. Well, you seem to be doing well. How'd that make you feel? Good about yourself? Yeah. Because if you're feeling really good about yourself, you should read the chat. <laughs> Knock you down a few matches. What are they saying? I don't know. They're... So, um, Andre Mueller won the Grand Prix. Oh, really? Is that the Andre Mueller who got second at uh, Pro Tour Valencia? It is. Sweet. Another uh, nice finish for him. I hadn't seen him in the past year or so. He's so been around. I've seen him at uh, a couple of PTs last year. Well, not PTs. It had to have been Grand Prix. I ain't got to do too many PTs. Are you going to be doing that PT thing full-time now? Uh, I should be in San Juan. I don't know if anything... I mean, hopefully I'd like to keep doing it. Sure. 